Well, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, I'm a little tiny bit late, uh, but good to see you all on here today. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, may the Lord bless you today, and uh, may the Lord bless our time in the Word uh, this afternoon. And uh, I just saw a van pull up into the parking lot. I see someone's at the door right now, and I believe it is my co-host, hey, Jack, Jack Johnson. I think he's, <laughs> you coming in for Tuesday talk? Um, no, I was gonna say hi. Yeah, come on in and say hi. Say hi to everybody. We've got a few people on here today. Uh, Want to go down the list and just say hi? Hello, everybody. <laughs> so we got New Life on there. We got Tony on there, right? Who else? Um, Danica, Angela, Sandy, Whitney. Yeah. And New Life again. <laughs> And Angela again. Hey, Jack, how come you're all wet? I thought I had my hand on your back and the, my hand's all wet. We went to the beach. How was it today? Good. Was it really hot down there? And the water was really cold. The, the sand was hot and the beach was cold and the water was cold. Well, you want to pull up a chair and join me? Uh, or you want to go change and come back? Or you want to go eat lunch? Yeah, I'm going to eat lunch. Yeah, you, you go eat lunch. If you have time, come on back and say hello or goodbye. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll see you later. Love you. Bye. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Pips went to uh, Plum Island today, and uh, that's their that's their go to thing when they have time to do that um, any summer day. Uh, I love Plum Island; it's a great place out there outside of Newburyport. Anyway, uh, how's everyone doing? Good to see you here. Um, have a few people on here. Uh, it's a hot day. Oh my goodness. There's no AC here in the office. We have our fan going. Hey, Lisa. God bless you. Um, but uh, it's all good. You know, it's okay. Uh, I don't mind it being hot. I like, I like it being hot, actually. Uh, so, I'm going to open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into a little teaching today. Okay, so let's go to the Lord. Dear Father, Lord, we love you today. Uh, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Thank you for your goodness to us. And we invite your Holy Spirit to bless this time in your word. We pray, Lord, for your touch to be upon us. And Lord, for any, spe any specific needs, we pray that you would meet those needs uh, today. We do pray for Gary and Joanne Feldman, Lord, in particular, as Gary is in New York getting his treatments and Joanne is still up here. In Massachusetts we just pray Lord your blessing your healing power to be upon both of them and uh, we pray for a good report really soon we also want to pray Lord for our brother Adrian Velez uh, that is uh, undergoing chemo we pray for healing and strength for him in the name of Jesus thank you Lord that his faith is good it's grounded in you and um, he's fighting the good fights Lord bless him today bless his wife and uh, be with him in a special way so thank you Lord uh, we look forward to your, your, our time in your word today. Uh, bless our, our time there. Speak to us, Lord, by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Well, uh, I was going to be speaking from Psalm 66, but I think I want to do something different here at the last minute, if I could. Uh, don't you love last minute changes? Well, you didn't know what the change was, so... Um, I want to go to James chapter 3. Uh, James chapter 3 was a devotional shared uh, in the pastor's meeting this morning. Uh, every Tuesday, uh, some local pastors get together on a Zoom meeting. And uh, one of the brothers shared from James chapter 3, starting at verse 13. But I want to start from verse number 1. Uh, because I think there's something in here for all of us. I'm just going to read it and make some comments on it. Uh, if we have time, we'll go over to Psalm, uh, one, uh, Psalm 66 as well. But anyway, uh, James chapter 3 says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. So the, the, the idea there is that um, teachers, you know, uh, will... will incur you know a, 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 a deeper judgment because of our calling as a teacher so it's good to aspire to be a teacher or a pastor or a leader uh, but if we are 
uh, we need to do so with diligence and with really the fear of God that we're doing it the right way. Uh, so this says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Uh, so maybe uh, in the early church, now the, James was the very first epistle written, so this is really early on in Christian church history. Uh, so he's saying, you know, uh, if you aspire to be a teacher, that's a good thing, but don't go too quickly. Make sure there's confirmation from your elders, from the Holy Spirit, from the congregation you're, you're ministering to. Um, but uh, teaching the Word of God is really, really important. So it goes on. We all stumble in many ways, for we all stumble in many ways. You know, oh my goodness, that's so true. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Uh, th now he goes into a little teaching about the tongue and how important the tongue is. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths uh, that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body, you know, the, the little thing that goes into a horse's mouth, with that we turn the whole body. Uh, look also at the ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. So he's giving some analogies of how of a little thing that directs the whole larger being that it's associated with. Um, a horse, uh, a bridle in a horse's mouth, um, a rudder uh, in a big ship steers that ship. Um, then it says in verse number five, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. So he, he's getting into the power of the tongue, you know. So let not everyone desire to be a teacher because there's a judgment there. And how we use our tongue to teach and to proclaim the truths of God is really very crucial. Uh, most of us take this passage um, not so much as teaching the Word of God, we just take it as, you know, bridling our tongue or being careful with what we say, which is a good application as well. Uh, yeah, Sandy, I think you're right. The reins in the horse's mouth, although uh, my translation says here, let's see. Yeah, it says, my, I have New King James Version. It says, we put bits in horse's mouth or reins in more, uh, horse's mouth. But uh, so in, in context, he's talking about teaching the word. Uh, that the Word of God is so important, and if, you, if someone is teaching, um, let us make sure we teach in the right way. Then in verse number five, he does kind of branch out, see how great a forest a little fire kindles. I wonder if anyone can relate that uh, the tongue uh, has great potential for blessing and great potential for harm, uh, great potential for you know, soothing and helping and great potential for hurting and destroying. As the psalmist said, or uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs, uh, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. So we give life with our tongue and we also kill with our tongue. So he says, uh, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So the tongue is a fire, the, wor uh, the world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on, it is set on fire by hell. Oh my goodness! So we got to get this tongue in check, don't we? Uh, for two reasons: just in general living, uh, and and secondly, if we're ever called to be a teacher or a proclaimer of the word of God, we've got to make sure our tongue is is tamed. Um, verse number seven: Every kind of beast and bird, a reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed. And has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. But let me just make this a clarification here. No man can tame the tongue, but God can. And as we surrender ourselves to God, he tames the tongue. He tames our spirit. He tames our mind. He tames our eyes. He tames everything about us. Uh, he brings us into submission. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 talks about the love of God constrains us, puts us together, and makes us usable for the kingdom of God. Um, I like to think of the Christian experience as uh, a wild buck. I, I read this a long time ago that Native Americans, I, I believe it was, 
uh, back in the old days, um, <laughs> would capture these wild horses. And the wild horses were absolutely beautiful and strong <clears throat> and powerful and, and great to look at. And uh, had, they had great potential. But they weren't of any use because they were wild. And what they would do was they would dig a big hole in the ground and fill it up with water. And it would become muddy. And uh, they would somehow coax that horse into that pit of water. And it would struggle, you know, the whole time. It would try to get, and it couldn't get out. Um, and after hours, I'm not sure how long, but after a time, uh, that horse would be broken. It would be broken, and uh, meaning that the, w the will of the horse was changed into being wild to being submissive to the owner. And so then they would take the horse out, and then the horse was valuable and good and, and put to good use. Uh, in the same manner, uh, we uh, come to the Lord with a, a wildness in us, a wild streak in us, uh, whether it's our behavior, our attitude, our thoughts, our words, our deeds, um, and, and the Holy Spirit is, is continuing, constantly trying to tame us and get us more submissive to the Lord. So I think, um, you know, the, the, the unwritten joke among Christians is that the last thing to be submitted to the Lord is a, is a person's wallet or a, a woman's purse, uh, is finances. Um, that's, that may be true. <laughs> In some ways, in another way, I think the last thing to be submitted to the Lord is the tongue. It's an ongoing battle. Uh, how many times do we slip up with our words? We say the wrong thing at the wrong time. We, uh, we may go back to using curse words or bad words, or we may say hurtful things to people and then regret it so, so terribly later. But it's a constant battle to surrender the tongue. So it says, uh, no man can tame the tongue. Let me just say, this is verse number 8 of, John, of James 3. James 3, 8, but God can tame the tongue. He can. Um, with it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude or in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. And again, he's speaking to the church, and he's saying, you know, uh, through our tongue, through our words, through our mouth, we bless God on the one hand, and we curse each other on the other hand, and these things shouldn't be like that. And he, he goes on in verse number 11, does a spring <coughs> send forth fresh water and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Um, so, yeah, so what he's saying is a, a spring of water, it's, it's either fresh uh, or bitter. It's, it's, it can't be both. Uh, a fig tree produces, you know, figs, an olive tree produces olives. And, and so a Christian produces good fruit and good things with our mouth. And then he goes on to uh, verses 13 uh, through 18. And this is what I wanted to get into. Um, who is wise and understanding among you? In other words, who can understand these things? Who can understand that uh, let not many of you be teachers, verse number one. Uh, let, let's let uh, all of us be, be submitted, submitted to God so that our tongue would change, our words would change, our attitude would change, what we say would change, how we speak would change. Uh, who, because, you know, fresh water, can't come, fresh water and bitter water can't come out of the same spout and so on and so forth. So who is wise enough? Who is understanding enough to understand this? So he says, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. So this is an ongoing thing. In other words, he's saying in verse 13, uh, let him who show by good conduct that his works are done by the meekness of wisdom. Our works and our voice and our words will be, will be temper, uh, tempered by the wisdom of God that we get from God's word, which is contrary to our human nature, our fleshly nature. You know, Romans uh, 8 and 12 and 10 talk a lot about our, and, and 6, a lot of it in Romans talk about our, 
our fleshly nature, our human nature versus our spiritual nature. Um, an ongoing dilemma in the Word of God, an ongoing dilemma in our lives. But who is wise and understanding among you? Can you understand this? That if we want to say the right thing and do the right thing, um, our conduct is tempered by uh, the meekness of wisdom. In other words, what we say and what we do is tempered by our submission to the Word of God. Wisdom is another way of saying, you know, the wisdom of God. Uh, there's some uh, proverbs and psalms that talk about the wisdom of God. Um, and so what he's saying is uh, our good conduct and our, our works and our words will be done properly when we're submitted to the word of God. Verse number 14. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, Do not boast and lie against the truth. So the verse number 14 is one of those scriptures that will hit you right between the eyes because most of us have this at some point. If you have bitter envy, so bitter envy, uh, envy, you know, anger, hatred, uh, being envious, jealous toward others, but bitter associated with it. It's a little bit deeper than just an initial reaction, it's, it meaning... We, we've let it fester. We've let it get into our spirit. Uh, we're not a very nice person when we have bitter envy towards someone or towards a situation. Uh, and self-seeking. So self-seeking is contrary to uh, being submitted to the meekness of wisdom. Being submitted to, in meekness, being submitted to God versus self-seeking and and boy, that's a constant battle, isn't it? I mean, we're self-seeking a lot um, because we have this fleshly nature. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, don't boast and lie against the truth. If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, can I just say, repent. <laughs> Give it to God. Confess it to God. Maybe confess it to another person that you feel close to. Um, and, and, and don't dwell in that. You know, don't recognize it, give it to God, and, and pray that God would change your heart and change your life. Verse 15, this wisdom, this wisdom that we're talking about, that we get by being humble and meek before God, it does not descend from above. Oh, I'm sorry. This wisdom, in verse number 14, that uh, this bitter envy, this self-seeking in your heart, this, this type of wisdom doesn't descend from above, but it's earthly and sensual and demonic. Ah, earthly, sensual, and demonic. So if we're influenced by those things and we're harboring bitterness, envy, self-seeking, pride, arrogance, um, this wisdom is not that which comes from above. This type of wisdom, earthly wisdom, worldly wisdom, fleshly wisdom is... Um, is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, tell me the truth here, confusion and envy and every evil thing are there. You ever notice when you get, when you get fouled up, when you get cloudy and dirty and, and impure and, and you're, you're in flesh, and, and um, where envy and self-seeking are, there's confusion. Absolutely there's confusion. And uh, every evil thing uh, is there. So, uh, boy, this is a, a deep teaching when I think about it. But, but James is saying, you know, for the early church, um, what you say is really important. And uh, if, you're, if your tongue is not under submission to God, uh, you're wide open to be used uh, in the demonic realm and in the fleshly realm to bring poison and bring hurt to the body of Christ and to your own life as well. So where envy, and verse 16, where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. It's so true. Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above. Okay, so he's contrasting the wisdom of the world versus the wisdom of heaven or the wisdom of the spirit. The wisdom that is from above is first of all pure. Yes, it's pure. Um, I'm just going to read these words. It's, it's peaceable. It's gentle. It's willing to yield. It's full of mercy 
and full of good fruits. It's without partiality and without hypocrisy. In other words, it's not judgmental. And then he concludes this by saying, Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So there's a principle of sowing and reaping, you know, from Galatians. What we sow, we will reap. And so if we're sowing the fruit of righteousness in peace, we will also make peace or reap peace as well. So that's a pretty, a pretty heavy thing. But uh, verse 13, let me go by this again. Verse 13, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. That's godly wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, don't boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom, this kind of wisdom, is not from above. It's earthly and sensual and demonic. Uh, notice he's putting a few words together here. Earthly, sensual, and demonic, uh, as opposed to spiritual, you know, heavenly, pure, and holy. Uh, it's in direct contrast to the wisdom of God. And so he says, where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there and it's so true if you ever walk down that road you know that when you're not in a good place with God in certain areas oftentimes confusion comes in you can't discern clearly the will of God you can't discern what you should be doing because your spirit is clouded by the presence of uh, evil demonic forces fleshly forces and so on uh, and then he says, but the wisdom that is from above is pure and peaceable and gentle and willing to yield and full of mercy and good fruits without judgment and partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So if we want to have the fruit of righteousness sowing it in peace, we've got to be on the right track with God. And that we'll reap that peace back to us. Hey, Jack, Hello. you joining me for a minute? Yeah. All right, good. Why don't you sit right here, and I want you to read a scripture while I'm getting another chair, okay? okay. Uh, let me see. Galatians chapter, uh, Galatians chapter 5, yeah, 5. Uh, we're going to read Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 16 down to... 25. So 16 to 25. Jack's going to start reading while I get another chair. Jack, why don't you sit right here? Move that down a little bit. And I'll be right back. Okay, to 22? Uh, I think 25. Okay. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, forni fornication, fornication, unclean, uncleanliness, yep. lewdness. Idolatry. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jeal Jealousies. jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand. It, just as I also told you in the times past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. All right. That's a lot of information, isn't it, Jack? Mm -hmm. But thank you for reading that. So there's, there's the flesh and there's the spirit. 
and the two are at odds with each other all the time. Uh, one more thing I wanted to read here. Um, and it's in Galatians chapter 6. It says this, um, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary in, while doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So, going back to James chapter 3, um, the tongue is, a, is an unruly uh, vessel. We need to bring our tongue into, into submission to God so that God would use our tongue to bless people with our words, with our with the word of God and with our words of encouragement and blessing. So, how you doing, Jack? Good. What'd you have for lunch? We didn't have lunch. You didn't have lunch yet? No. You gonna have it right after this? Mm -hmm. Hey, what's going on this afternoon? Um, at one o'clock or so, we're gonna have swimming lessons. Swimming, like yesterday? Yeah. Wow, I, I watched the Pips in their swimming lessons yesterday. And uh, they did so good. They swam the whole width of that pool. It was that was enormous, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it was a, I thought it was a pretty long way to swim all that way and then back again several times. But anyway, um, tell us about Plum Island real quick. The sand was really hot. Yeah. And the water was cold. Yeah. Did you go in for a long time? Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. Well, good. Did you lay out and get a suntan? No. Were you running around the whole time? No. Did you climb on the rocks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it crowded today? Not really, but there were people. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, it's 1228. We got to wrap it up. The word for today is surrender your tongue to the Lord. And uh, let your tongue be guided by the Holy Spirit so that you could be a blessing to people. What you say, how you say it, is really, really very important. Um, if your tongue is not producing good fruit, uh, you may want to check and see where your heart is. The, Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, uh, I'm sorry, out of, yeah, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever is in our heart does come out. And uh, we want to make sure that what comes out is good and holy and wholesome. Amen. Well, um, I'm going to ask Jack to say a little prayer. And then I'm going to pr pray and then we'll sign out. Jack, would you close us out in prayer? Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. And thank you for the, this half of the day. Yes, Lord. And let the rest of the day be good. Yes, um, Lord. Um, Thank you for providing for us. Yes, Lord. For all the days that we have lived. Yes. Show us the plans that you have for us until we go up to heaven to live and to worship with you. Yes, Lord. And let us just have a great day and a great year. Yes, Lord. And let's have a great uh, time. Amen. Amen. And Lord God, thank you for your word today. I pray for everyone on here that James 3 would uh, take on a, a deeper meaning, uh, that we would reflect upon the teaching, apply it to our lives, and uh, remain, uh, get and remain in good standing with you. So Lord, may your blessing be upon us. Lord, keep us safe uh, in this hot, hot weather. Keep our homes and apartments uh, functioning. Keep our cars functioning well. Let the heat not be a factor in things working or not. And, uh, and Lord, let us be working well in this hot weather too. So we thank you for that. We pray it all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, amen. and amen. All right, everyone. Hey, Erica Sarcion, good to see you on here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your comments there. We appreciate it. And, uh, whoops, what did I do? 
I think I have to finish. I don't know what happened. But anyway, God bless you. We'll see you soon, okay? Bye-bye.